Hey guys, welcome back to another video and welcome to my channel if you are new here. This video is going to be on the unboxing, the setup, and my thoughts on my new Elgu Neptune 3 Plus printer, which is a slightly larger printer than the two other printers that I started with, being the Ender 3 Pro, which I got at Micro Center for $99. And also, I bought a BiQ B1 at Micro Center about three months ago. After seeing it on sale for $150, I just had to pick one up just to see what it was about. So this is my third 3D printer, and one of the main reasons I got it is it came with a lot of really good features. Here I am unpacking it. It also comes pretty much built already. You just basically have to put the top piece on, the two support bars, the LCD display, and then plug in everything, and also the filament holder. And that's basically mostly it. Came with all the accessories that I basically upgraded my other 3D printers with, a filament runout sensor, dual Z axes, it actually has a timing belt for the dual Z axes on top to keep them in sync, it also has a nice touch screen that you can actually pull out which you can see the cord right there comes with really good tools and a little bit of sample PLA I am using my Harbor Freight $10 tools tip tools tool tips or whatever you call them they're extended reach tool tips made by Warrior they work really well in my Hitachi powered screwdriver I like using that for a lot of my small electronics. So I'm just following the instructions here and taking my time and making sure everything's built correctly. These two bars that help support the top can actually help level out and right angle those um, support bars. So that's what I'm doing here. I'm just adjusting the tightness to get it to uh, a perfect square. Just using my screwdriver light to see if there's a gap between the ruler and the vertical bar and then you just got to plug in all the end connections which are right there right by the wires here I am having it set up on my printer table which is just temporary because it's a fold-out table and it's not really that stable this is all sped up 20 times speed I just basically had to put a piece of paper manually adjust the knobs till it was slightly frictioned under it and then I ran the auto bed level next I'm going to load up filament into the extruder which is very simple since it's a direct extruder you don't have to deal with the Bowden tube also the filament sensor runout sensor is not very close to the extruder so it makes it easy to manage whenever there's a runout I do like having a direct extruder now that I have one. It makes loading the filament much simpler. Here I am just purging out the Overture PLA. It looks like they used some orange test PLA from the factory to test out the printer before they shipped it out, which is a nice thing. From seeing all the videos online, the Elgu seems like it has pretty good quality control. I don't see any major issues. My hot end fan was slightly loud 
but I think it will break in a little. And if it doesn't, I might contact them and see if they can ship me a replacement. I do have the Elgu Max coming, so I can compare the fan noise on the hot end when I do get that. But it hasn't shipped yet. So here it is, putting down the first layer line of the built-in Buddha G-code that came on the SD card included. So far, first layer looks good. Did and we'll let the rest of the video play out, and I will give my final thoughts. First layer going down. So this is one of the first prints I made. Came out really good. Layer lines, really good. This is pre-sliced on the SD card. The second thing I printed was a tool holder that came out good as well. Nice as well also. I'll bring you that over and show you guys. So here's the tool holder. Came out nice. This was also pre-sliced. Everything that came out really nice. I used Overture PLA on this, so everything came out really smooth. Lastly, I printed this iPhone XS case for my phone. I know it's an old phone, but I will be upgrading this year. I've been waiting for USB C, but this came out pretty good. There's a few strings, but I'll clean that up with a heat gun. It came out really good, the retractions and everything. It's one of the reasons why I didn't want to upgrade my older printers with a direct drive because I was getting this one. This came out beautiful compared to how my other printers print it. So I'll give you a comparison of how my case, you can see this case came out so much nicer. This one has some bubbles in it and uh, you can see the pattern. Also the sides weren't as clean. You can see a lot of the stuff. I think I had to use supports to even just print that one. This one I had no supports. Everything came out really really clean all the lines. All the lines are really, really precise and clean. I don't know if you can see it on the camera. But I'm really happy with the way that this handled this color changing TPU. So it worked really well. I think it's a 95A hardness TPU. But I'm really excited about how this one turned out. And this is cool. It's a color changing TPU. So my final thoughts on this printer is it is really awesome for the price. I paid $340 at the time and you're not going to find another printer that's going to have this build volume and this many features. It has like a built in LED light and all these cool features. If you want to see more specs you can visit their website and hopefully this video gives you more insight or gives you a better idea if you were in the market for one of these printers. They make three models, they have the Pro, the Plus and the Max. The Max is the largest they have right now, and I highly recommend these printers. So hopefully this video helped you, and if it did, give it a thumbs up. And if you want to subscribe to my channel to watch more videos like this in the future, hit that subscribe button. And as always, thank you for watching.